When melatonin doesn't touch your insomnia, and edibles stop working, you know you're in trouble. I tried everything before you ask. Meditation, no screens, one hour before bed, two hours, three hours. I tried drinking more milk, and I tried doing yoga. I even got a prescription for sleeping pills. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Well, the sleeping pills did work, I lie. I'm sorry, they worked, but I was just so groggy the next day, so I couldn't see the point in taking them unless it had been a few days without sleep. I got crazier. I went on a 10-day meditation retreat, which was definitely not cheap. I got one of those homeopathic magnet headsets. I started long-distance running. I switched to a raw vegan diet which I even managed to stick to for upwards of three weeks. I doused my pillows in lavender oil. I bought blackout curtains. I tried going to bed at 8.30 p.m. And you know what? I feel so stupid for telling you all this because my insomnia problem was immediately cured as soon as I started falling asleep to ASMR videos. I guess I was lonely. When I realized that the sound of a young woman's binaural whispering was the key to having a normal sleep-wake cycle, it felt like a bloody miracle. From then on, I devoured all the content I could find. From Heather Feather to ASMR Darling, you better believe I watched all of it. Every night for three years, I put on the sounds of fingernail taps and gentle mouth noises, and I slept like a log. It was heaven. And then it stopped working, and I was in hell. I chased high and low to find the kind of content that would finally get me to sleep again. I paid my favorite ASM artists to make the kinds of videos that used to work for me. I paid, God, thousands of dollars, maybe tens of thousands of dollars. I would have paid more gladly if I had it to spare. I began to lie awake at night, feverishly scrolling through YouTube, desperately trying to find ASMR channels I hadn't heard of. I watched channels with less than a hundred subscribers, less than ten. One night, I started watching the channels with no subscribers at all. The first three were terrible, with tons of background noise and grating voices. The fourth one, though, Vera V RSMA. I couldn't understand why she had no subscribers. She was beautiful, for one. ASMR isn't sexual, but good looks certainly don't hurt. Her voice. I don't know if I have the words. A whisper, yes, but with none of the harshness of her competitors. It was as smooth and light as a cloud. The words, too, were perfect. She spoke them in Spanish with an odd accent. Chilean, maybe? Without too much emotion or excitement. So that you couldn't even tell from context what she might be saying. A flawless monotone. I subscribed immediately. I fell asleep in minutes. It was a goddamned miracle. She had seven videos, which I listened to dutifully that first week. God, it was the first time I'd felt well-rested in months. I hadn't remembered what it felt like to wake up in the morning without feeling the nausea of pulling a veritable all-nighter. I ran through those seven videos every week for six months, and then started paying her to make more. No requests, just money freely gifted with the hope that it might spur her to create more content. I was right, it did. While her subscriber base never grew beyond me, her video archive did. Here she was brushing her long hair. Here, she was tapping a wooden box with her long nails. Here, she was putting on new boots and slowly, slowly looping the laces through the holes in different designs. 
Soon she started looking at the camera directly when she spoke. Sometimes speaking sentences that I thought might be directed at me. Not that I understood. While Spanish is a beautiful language, I never learned a word past burrito or cerveza. Of course she couldn't have known that. My Patreon account was locked down and completely anonymized. Like I said, ASMR isn't sexual, but not everyone knows that. I still didn't have any friends at work, but I didn't want to negate the possibility altogether. She made more videos, luscious ones. Here she was eating jicama. There she was taking a walk through piles of crunchy leaves, sometimes whispering beautiful words into her binaural microphone. I let myself marinate in that last video, letting its sonic warmth wash over me again and again for three nights straight. Every time I fell asleep as soon as the whispers began. I began to feel like Vera deserved more of an audience. So I posted that video on so I posted that video on an ASMR subreddit. God help me, it was the worst decision I ever made. I knew something was wrong when I woke up. I never have Reddit notifications, believe me. I'm not much of a commenter, and when I bother, I don't usually have anything to say that's so consequential that anyone would bother replying. I had certainly never seen a double digit next to that envelope before. That bit at the end was creepy. Great ASMR vid OP, but... Can I get a content warning for that scary shit at the end? Cool that she's bilingual. Thanks for sharing. Confused, I clicked back to the video that had begun to feel as familiar as my own hand. I skipped through, trying to figure out what everyone was talking about. What could I possibly have missed? I watch this video almost daily. My skin began to crawl. I didn't watch this video. Rather, I did, but never the whole thing. I always fell asleep before it was over. With a growing feeling of unease, I clicked to nine minutes. I had never gotten that far into it. The video was fine for a while, with more left-right, right-left whispers in what sounded like normal Spanish. Leaves crunched under her boots. Oh, those carefully laced boots. And a bird chirped overhead occasionally. She brought the camera up to her face with a finger on her lips. Then shushed the microphone quietly. Going left, right, right, left again. My skin prickled. I almost swooned into sleep right there and then. She moved the camera down to her feet, tiptoeing through the leaves now, being buffoonishly careful to make no noise. I frowned in confusion. Was this a role play robbery? I hadn't seen her do any sort of gimmicks before, but maybe she was trying something new. When the camera panned up, it showed only a boxwood hedge, but she continued her Spanish susurrations. I was wondering idly if it mattered much what she was saying when she placed the camera on the ground and placed her cheerful face into the center of the frame. I almost felt naked. It was as if she was looking into my own eyes. In the recording, she looks up at the viewer, me, smiles and whispers. I was there on the day you were born, and when you die. I heard the click of her nails behind me, and shuddered in fear. Her breath was hot on my neck. I'll be there 